Welcome to Flight Insight Test Prep. We're reviewing everything you need to know and only what you need to know to pass your test. This is Private Pilot Knowledge Test Prep Chapter 5, Performance. After finishing this chapter, you'll be ready to try the practice test questions that go along with this course. We'll start performance by talking about V-speeds. Every aircraft has a series of reference speeds, many of which are color-coded on the airspeed indicator as shown here. The lowest of these V-speeds will be the stall speeds. Remember how an aircraft can stall at any airspeed? Well, that's true, but in a specific set of circumstances, it will stall at specific speeds. For example, when the flaps are out, when the flaps are down and the gear is down, in other words, the aircraft is in a landing configuration, the aircraft will stall at VSO. I often think of the SO as being short for stuff out, like flaps, gear, other stuff that you put out in the plane when you're landing. So this is depicted by the very bottom of the white arc on the airspeed indicator, the landing configuration airspeed. Another stall speed refers to when the airplane is in what's called a specified configuration, sort of a vague term. Usually what this means is that the flaps are up, so it can be thought of as a takeoff stall speed, and it's indicated at the bottom of the green arc. This is VS1. Why is it the, that the airplane stalls at specific speeds and having the flaps makes that speed slower? When you slow your airplane down, so if you bring your throttle back, the only way you can maintain altitude, the only way you can maintain that same amount of lift is to increase your angle of attack, is to pitch up. The slower you get, the higher your angle of attack goes until you hit that dreaded critical angle of attack. This is where the air no longer does what you want it to do, to flow smoothly over the wing and the plane stalls. So that's the relationship between speed and angle of attack. At a certain speed, you have nowhere to go but over that critical angle of attack and you stall. So what do flaps do? If this wing is stalled and the speed there is below the green arc, it's below VS1, well, this wing going the same speed but with the flaps down is producing more lift. More lift means it can fly just as slowly and not be stalled. So as long as it stays above that lower white arc, the wing keeps flying. So flaps allow us to reach a little further back on the airspeed indicator to the bottom of that white arc where VSO lives, stuff out, SO. At the other end of the white arc is another V speed we're worried about with flaps, and that's the maximum full flaps extension speed, VFE. The beginning of the white arc to the end of the white arc is the flap range then. No flaps or no full flaps above it, and no flaps, well, no flying at all below it, so that's the flap range. So the green arc is the normal operating range, green for normal. Again, below the green arc, you're only flying with the flaps out. And at the top of the green arc, you have what's called the maximum normal operating speed, or VNO, the NO for normal operating. The test also refers to this as the maximum structural cruising speed, and this gives you a clue as to why it's important. When we're flying, sometimes we're experiencing turbulence from thermals or wind being disrupted by the surface or something. Turbulence adds load to the aircraft, just as if we're being maneuvered abruptly. Whether you, the pilot, are doing it or whether the wind is doing it, the airframe doesn't care. A load is a load. Greater air speeds lead to greater loads and can f fatigue the structure, so there's a maximum recommended speed for flying through rough air, and this is VNO. If the air is smooth, you can fly in that yellow arc until you hit the red line, which is the never exceed speed, VNE. Self-explanatory, I think. Even in smooth air, you'd expect things to start snapping off the plane past this speed. The yellow arc, then, is the caution range. It's outside the normal operating range, but as long as you're in smooth air, you're okay. On the test, you'll see this chart. It plots velocity versus G-loading, so it's called a VG diagram. One thing to notice is that some of the same color coding from the airspeed indicator is here on this chart. Here's how to use this chart for the questions on the test. If we have an aircraft doing 100 miles an hour and at 1G, like it's wing, wings level and holding altitude, it's smack in the normal operating range, the green arc. If we slow it down though, when it gets to that line between A and J, it'll stall. Its stall speed is the end of the green zone, that's VS1. Now if we go from wings level into a 60 degree bank, we've doubled our load factor. The stall speed goes up with a load factor of 2, so we've only got to slow down to about 85 to stall. Basically the area above the green zone shows the speeds we'll stall at with different load factors. Now those white lines are giving us a representation of turbulence. 
Turbulent error plus speed equals increased load. So if we say we're in turbulence that is great enough to cause the airplane to sink 30 feet per second, for example, the plane will start to experience excessive loads at the speeds where you enter the red zone, the structural damage zone. Stuff starts to snap off the plane. But now those same speeds which were excessive before are no danger in smoother air where the aircraft is back around 1G. Sure, it's in the yellow caution zone, but as long as we're not getting those big wind gusts, the aircraft is okay. Finally, because stall speeds increase with higher load factors, an aircraft flying relatively slowly while doing maneuvers like hard banks will stall sooner than an aircraft doing the same maneuvers at higher speeds. The faster aircraft will continue to add load to the aircraft, reaching that red excessive damage zone, while the slower aircraft will just stall, kind of save us from our own foolishness doing maneuvers like that. This point, point C, where the red zone starts at the top of the chart, this is the fastest the plane can fly, where it'll stall before experiencing structural damage in like an abrupt maneuver. This is called design maneuvering speed, or VA. Out of all the V speeds, maneuvering speed, or VA, is one important one that isn't shown at all on the airspeed indicator. It can be placarded on a cockpit panel or something like that, but it's not going to be indicated by any color coding on the uh, ASI at all.